Moin, es sind dann der Prof von natürlich Luxemburgisch with Anne. So in this lesson, I want you to learn 15 adverbs uh, to make your sentences more interesting. So what is an adverb? Well, an adverb is a small word that helps make your sentence more interesting. So it will add more um, information, more detail uh, to your sentence. Yes? Was du prat für die Lektion? Are you ready? Dann lass! So let's illustrate this with an example. For example, you can say your sentence, a schuken Zeit. Well, this is a straightforward sentence and it's quite poor in information. If you want to sound maybe more, more, more polite or more casual, you can, for example, add the word leider, which is an adverb, which means unfortunately. So you can say, schon leider kein Zeit, or more naturally, schon leider kein Zeit. You see, or you hear, your, your sentence uh, sounds more polite, okay, not so straightforward. So, in this lesson, learn 15 adverbs to make your phrases sound more interesting. So, before you learn now these 15 adverbs, um, learn first where to put your adverb in a sentence. So this is quite easy. So it is an adverb. So it goes along with the verb. So you can put it uh, immediately after the main verb, as in our sentence, a schuleider kein Zeit. So hun is the main verb, and then it is followed by the adverb, a schuleider kein Zeit. Or you can start with the adverb. So you can say, leider hunnisch kein Zeit. But if you start with your adverb, remember that you have to put your verb second element in the sentence. Therefore, it is leider hunnisch and not leider isch hun. Okay? Great. So let's start with the first adverb, leider, and pronounce it leider. Okay? So you can say leider Hunne Schmur kein Zeit für Tennis zu spielen. I repeat, leider Hunne Schmur kein Zeit für Tennis zu spielen. Let's move on with the adverb unbedingt. Unbedingt. For example, ich muss halt unbedingt an Taptikt gehen. Let's imagine the sentence without the adverb. Ich muss halt an Taptikt gehen. Then the sentence is neutral. There is no much detail in the information. But if you add unbedingt, you give um, more information. Ich muss halt unbedingt an Taptikt gehen. You see the difference? Great. Let's move on with bestimmt. Bestimmt. For example, jenes bestimmt geschwen heil. Jenes bestimmt geschwen Hoffentlich, hoffentlich, hoffentlich bleibt wieder the weekend so gut. Hoffentlich bleibt wieder the weekend so gut. Zufällig, zufällig. Ich schon als Nopa zufällig am Kino getraf. Ich schon als Nopa zufällig am Kino getraf. Natürlich. We use natürlich a lot. For example, natürlich kann ich da helfen. Or you can say, ich kann da natürlich helfen. Ich kann da natürlich helfen. Next one. Außerdem. Außerdem, for example, Ich schon a look kein Zeit, dir zu helfen, am außerdem sinne schmidt. Ich schon a look kein Zeit, dir zu helfen, 
und außerdem sind ich mit. Eventuell. Eventuell. Meine anderen kommen eventuell nur auf Besuch. So, this expresses a possibility. Huh? So, meine anderen kommen eventuell nur auf Besuch. Another one, zumals. Zumals um, is a synonym of besonders. For example, mein Mann kocht gern. Zumals in der Plan. Mein Mann kocht gern. Zumals in der Plan. Or you can say besonders in der Plan. Great. Let's move on. Now the next adverb is difficult to recognize in conversations. It is obimol. So this means suddenly, and it sounds like this: obimol. Now repeat after me: obimol. Great. For example, obimol hat the nobar sein Hund ugefange mat billen. Obimol hat the nobar sein Hund ugefange mat billen. Okay. Stanisch. Stanisch. Stanisch is a synonym of dauernd. Dauernd. For example, you can say Stanisch as high viel Comedy. Or you can say Dauernd as high viel Comedy. Okay. Let's move on with Freiwillig. Freiwillig. Wie geht Freiwillig mit mir zu Fuß an der Restaurant? Wie geht Freiwillig mit mir zu Fuß an? An the restaurant. Now this is as well an adverb which is not um, easy to recognize in a conversation. Listen uh, to the pronunciation. Anangams. Anangams. These are two words but they are pronounced as if it were just one word. Anangams. For example, my student layered Lützeboyish Anangams Deutsch. Now listen and repeat simultaneously with me. My student layered Lützeboyish an an Engels Deutsch. Great. Right. Next adverb. Madenin. Now, this isn't pronounced as it is spelled. So, we don't say mat, matenin. We say madenin. Madenin. Okay? Example. Um, Sie schwätzen nicht mehr madenin. Sie schwätzen nicht mehr madenin. Let's finish this list with a last adverb, which you have heard, I think so. Für dich. Ja, für dich. For example, für dich muss man bei der Bäcker gehen. Für dich muss man bei der Bäcker gehen. Great. Now you have learned 15 useful adverbs, which you can use in your daily conversations to make your sentences more interesting. And remember that on my blog you can learn more examples because I have added more sentences and you can practice with a translation exercise and get the solution as well uh, if, you trans, uh, if you download the transcript of this lesson. Um, but I think it's time now for your exercise. Übung. So, I will tell you three sentences in Luxembourg, in English, and you will have to translate them into Luxembourgish. And put your answer in the comments below so to get my feedback. Satz Nummer eight. Suddenly, they all laughed. Satz zwei. Do you have to constantly ask me something? Satz 3. Maybe my parents will pop in tomorrow. Great. So write your comments, uh, your answer in the comments below. Merci für no cooking. Thank you for watching. And bis next time.